Yo everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews bringing you the next episode of Review Recall. This will cover most of the albums I heard in May. I didn't get to all the later albums like at all. Anything from the 27th and on will be in the June Review Recall. But anyway, let's just dive right into the albums. <laughs> This one took me by surprise. I was not expecting this incredible, eclectic, genre-spanning album. 23 tracks and it all flows together pretty well. Normally longer albums like this don't strike me that much, especially from a reggaeton artist, but Bad Bunny's been impressing me recently. I hope he can keep it up. I've been a fan of Rammstein now for the past few years, and I think this new album of theirs is another very fun listen. As a defender of Crip's last album, Buried Alive, this was such a disappointment. The seven track stretch at the beginning of the album was atrocious, and while it didn't really reach any height of that last album, some of the scattered songs near the back half saved this from plummeting. Hailstorm have been incredibly consistent for the good part of a decade now. Some would say it's boring, I would say if it ain't broke, why bother fixing it? If you like your hip-hop relentless, angry, rough, all that good stuff, I recommend this to you. You know, it's one of their better records, but I mean, Train will be trained, so if you're a fan, don't miss it. Sophie Tucker is my kind of electronic music, much more of a focus on typical pop structures, but with stronger, worldly, and eclectic influences and sampling. I love their debut Treehouse, and Wet Tennis here is another smash. It's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. The first half is pretty unbearable though, but the second half leads way to some more palatable tracks that play to Jack's strengths. I didn't have too many expectations going in, but it's not outright detestable, just kind of bland overall. It's a little bit disappointing that this wasn't as fiery as their last record, but it still had some good vocals, punchy rhythms. It's probably the weakest Pew 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 record so far though. Definitely a solid underground hip hop release, love know-it-all's presence across it. Not a standout by any means, but an enjoyable project nonetheless. I am saddened how forgettable and bland this album was. Really no memorable songs on it, just kind of a boring listen. The back half of this really picked it up well enough to save it for me. Taco is a complete banger. But honestly, the production is more what I remember from this, not really IDK himself. Despite that, this was still a fun listen. I've never fully dived into Block Party, however, I was a bit skeptical that people weren't feeling this too much, so from an outsider's perspective going into this, it's got some sweet melodies, decent bit of energy, and an overall solid vocal effort, but I found it difficult to cling on to most of it after the album was over. Callum is a Snake is probably the best track for me, but aside from that, it's kind of just fine. <laughs> You know it's a bit inconsistent and all over the place, but I adore the lo-fi abstractness present here. Haven't truly immersed myself in Quelle's music, but I think that's gonna have to change going forward. Very good stuff here. An amazing improvement from the Sonic Ranch, their last album. This feels much more catchy, inherently memorable, and just fun. I had a blast while this was on. Uh, it's a fine album, certainly better than everything now. The production is solid all around, but this just didn't click with me at all. Nothing to really grab me and sucker me in. I'll certainly take it over their last record though, easy, no questions asked. But is this scratching an itch for me? Not really, no. It's not as fun or memorable as the last Jules Clay project last month. This was only 17 minutes too, but it wasn't a bad listen at all. Okay. This really surprised me. Even at the ripe age of 89, Willie Nelson's voice is incredible, and hearing him sing with a charming brand of tongue-in-cheek humor, yet also the passionate love songs, is extremely endearing. Check this out if you haven't. You know, if you like the Black Keys, this is more of it. I don't know what else you want me to say. 
I don't really get the hype behind Ella May. Her album game has not been it for me. She has a great voice, but would I take her over? Kehlani, Tinashe, Ari Lennox, Sinead Harnett? Not really, no. <laughs> And hey, speaking of Kehlani, new record here. With every album, I get closer and closer to fully getting Kehlani, but this is the first album of theirs that feels more like a regression than a step forward. The bland cuts really weigh this one down, and even at the 38 minute runtime, it kind of drags a bit. Still, not a bad album at all. I do think it's quite good, just a little disappointing. <laughs> Just some goddamn amazing and catchy pop punk, a very fun record. Psy always knows how to turn his records into a good time, and this latest one here is no exception. The production is intricately layered and very competent without being overly polished, the tracks flow between each other very well, and Psy remains a lively captivating host while the features are utilized to their best. Had a blast listening to this. So I listened to this on a listening party on Discord, link in the description if you want to come join, and I did enjoy this record, loved a lot of the personal stories painted, felt like a very human record. Plus there were also some amazing bops and jams like Die Hard, N95, Mr. Morale. There were some songs I personally didn't care for, most notably Crown was extremely plodding, We Cry Together did not need to be nearly 6 minutes long, and Mirror was a bit of a forgettable closer in my opinion, but Mother I Sober is one of the best tracks I've ever heard Kendrick on, that shit really hit me. So yeah, not as best, not as worst, I do think it's a great album. Sigrid continues to make pop music much more impactfully than the average pop star. It feels very virtuous and honest instead of the overly sheen, sterile scene. Pretty solid songwriting too. Yeah, an excellent album. I don't get it at all. Like, the orchestration is nice, but this one just did not click with me at all. Not that much of a cohesive record, and certainly not as left field and experimental as the Hi This Is Flume mixtape from 2019, but I can't deny some of those radio friendly hooks if I tried to. This new Action Bronson album doesn't do much different from his other albums, the production is nice, and he just sounds like he's having a great time, it's hard to be mad at him for it. <sighs> so little effort seem to go into this. The Chainsmokers re-embracing the electronic side of their earlier years while catering to the minimalist aesthetics of modern pop, plus some of the worst vocal effects I've heard from a big name in a while. It equates to the Chainsmokers' worst album. Even Memories Do Not Open had some more authentic production and heartier performances. This one is just so middle of the road, I get nothing out of it. <laughs> Miranda really seemed to find her stride with the Marfa Tapes project last year, so for the first time I actually had a decent chunk of hype going into this new record of hers, and I think it delivered, very solid country album. I think there were a few cuts here that could have been cut from the overall track list, but I had a fun time listening to this, looking forward to whatever comes out next. You know, I've never been too into Three Days Grace, but while Walsh's vocals can be a bit snotty and grating at times, the instrumentals were often impactful, punchy, and exciting. Not a bad album at all. Amazing flows, great beats, not a single bad feature here. I don't get why people are hating on this. This is a thoroughly enjoyable listen. Definitely a step up from latest record project. The instrumentals have more life to them, but my god Van sounds horrible over this. Even though his vocals have the old age spunk to them, they're not solid vocal efforts at all. Plus, let's be real, this did not need to be 80 minutes long. However, it's still an improvement. I was first introduced to Weathen through his collaborations with Oliver Tree. This is the first project I've heard from him in full, and I like it. It opens up very strong and has scattered bangers across the brief 27 minutes of trap, hyperpop, and EDM. Not a bad electronic effort at all, better than most this year for sure. I'm very surprised how little of this stuck with me. It's got nothing on it that's detestable, far from it. But there isn't also anything that really stands out here. The second half does pick it up a bit with songs like Heaven Is Here and Daffodil, but for the most part this is just some muted, matured alternative art pop. If that sounds like your scene, then I would recommend checking it out. Definitely is one of the better Simple Plan albums, still don't like the majority of the lyrical content, but the melodies are fine enough and Pierre's voice isn't as grating as it is on previous albums, but 
I liked it more than I expected to. Alrighty, folks, and that's going to do it for this episode of Review Recall. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and go follow me on all my social medias, which will all be in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace!